good GPA which is not compulsory. For me, something around 80k would be good. The university provides you a separate uh, login ID and password and everything, so you have to apply for co-op. Uh, also, uh, our university provides like uh, free lunch. Finding a home uh, is not really. Uh, very easy over here getting an admission without giving uh, gre not very difficult but you have to be very proactive because there are like a lot of students over here everyone is looking for something to do on the campus because that's relatively easier to w- what kind of job you would find outside i had a friend who was studying here before i came to this uh, university until now i think he has not been able to find a job so i just did not want to uh, go to the Hey guys, welcome to College Dunya Study Abroad. This is Varun and today we have Tanvi Gaura. Tanvi is pursuing her Master's in Applied Computer Science at uh, Concordia University, Canada. Hi Tanvi. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Yeah, I'm great. Uh, Tanvi, uh, can you introduce yourself for, uh, to our viewers and talk a bit about your background? Okay, so uh, I'm Tanvi. Uh, I'm from Jharkhand. I mean, uh, from Jamshedpur. It's a very small city. You might or might not have heard about it. The Tata so, Steep. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so I did my schooling uh, from my city and then I studied from SRM Chennai. Um, after that, like even during my uh, time uh, during the B Tech, I was working for like full time internship during my fourth year. After that, I just joined very briefly, like for three to four months in uh, I think CTS. I'm not. I'm so sorry. I don't remember the full name. And after I started working for Accenture, so in total by now I think have. Three years of experience. I'm still working here full time ever since I got here. Um, I have got decent grades, I'd say, like, throughout my schooling. So that's that's about me. Would you like to share your grades? <laughs> okay, so uh, in tenth I got like ninety two percent, and I am from ICSC. And Ooh, in twelfth I <laughs> uh, in ISC I got like S. 89 point some percentage so like almost 90 okay. uh, during my btec i think it was somewhat uh, 85ish somewhere a little more than that but yeah i would say well, okay. yeah, i would say that's not okay that's way more than okay <laughs> it's way more than average that's that's for sure so <laughs> how did you ended up in canada pursuing your masters like, like when did you decide This was a really uh, very. I did not think about pursuing my masters abroad. Definitely, I was one of those person who was just going along with the job and like anything in India. I did not really plan per se. Uh, but then COVID happened, and some of my friends started applying. Like uh, the people who really wanted to go. Like I'm from SRM, so a lot of people just uh, pursue their masters abroad. So they started very early. Like uh, by the end of third year, they just started preparing for their GRE, TOEFL, and IELTS. And I was just not uh, the thought did not strike me at that time. So after I think first year of COVID, um, I was working full time, and I just thought like a few of my friends were applying, and I thought I'll just go for the easiest route. I did not want to. uh give the gre test because that could require like at least 3 4 months of study and i just did not have the time i also work as a freelancer i was doing that more when i was in india so i just did not have the time and i also something that uh, if you've had schooling in english medium i think it should be fairly easy for you so i just took that test and applied to like a couple of universities mm-hmm. um like i have friends in uh, montreal and they just applied like they were very early but then due to okay. covid uh, their intake just kept on getting delayed and delayed so i applied along with them once uh, for winter intake i applied to ubc i don't know what i was thinking um and then i applied to alberta university of alberta which was a very wrong decision considering it's 
very cold for me over here and i think i would have not survived over there so anyhow i did not get into those universities it was very ambitious and i did not do any thorough research in that sense so i was actually using uh, information from college dunia like a lot of information wow. and i also had like one uh, i think you guys have like a partner kind of program like yeah. where someone reaches out to you yeah so i had that and they suggested me a few universities which unfortunately i like did not work for me and then i just uh, i had a friend studying over here and i somehow had a conversation with him in like 2021 i believe so he told so, me uh, how the course was and how the city was just thought sure why not i just so that that's a college. really long story <laughs> i would say <laughs> but uh, yeah well let's do this let's roll back a bit and uh, let's okay. start uh, part by part uh, so which all universities did you apply for um as i said earlier like uh, ubc and alberta university of alberta which i like did not get into yeah. obviously because i'm not that smart <laughs> <laughs> no you and, never know but yeah and and this university i guess like concordia uh i applied to these two universities in uh, winter uh, okay. the win- like in 2021 i think okay. like uh, a semester prior to what i applied here Okay. So I did not get accepted. So I just thought, and the fees for applying, I think, is around one hundred and twenty-five CAD or somewhere like, like around hundred. So okay. I did not want to just keep on applying mindlessly, and uh, yeah. like I spoke to a few people who are overseas, and they just said that it does not really matter that much uh, which university you come from. and if you know your like if you have the skill set you would get a decent job so and i applied to the next semester for the next intake i just applied to concordia because i had a friend studying over here and he told me about the course about the overall things that were going yeah. on in the university i just like that so you applied just concordia on your yes. next, uh, on your current intake yeah. that time Okay, that's yeah. nice. So I I believe it was a safe bet. Uh, like uh, my profile was at par with what the university requirements were. Yeah. So I just did not want to uh, go through the hassle of applying everywhere again. I think that kind of answers like why you applied for Concordia. So uh, you would you say like the course and the, the flexibility is, yeah. you had you had in terms of personal aspects like the money and the chances of getting admit i guess yeah the chances of getting an admission without giving a gre and like i would say that was my first priority because That's i nice. did not have the time yeah. and like it it's a, a nice university it's pretty uh, decent ranking uh, world ranking yeah. and everything so yeah. uh, so did you write ielts or toefl for I, uh, the uh, I wrote IELTS and I got like a seven point five band. Oh, that's nice. And uh, what about the SOP and LORs? Uh, so, how many LORs and like were they professional or academic? Yeah. So, uh, I started applying after COVID, like after COVID started. So, colleges were closed, and I finished my BTEC in twenty twenty. so it was really difficult to talk to professors and to like just get this done so i had to get them to email me the lors and stuff like that and just it was just a very difficult time but i somehow managed to like uh, i said earlier i was working as a full time intern so i had uh, good relations with the person who started it like the boss <laughs> and okay. he wrote one for me and two other professors Okay. wrote it for me they had uh, good like they had done their phd they had some publications so okay so you had total 3 lors if i'm not wrong yes three okay. three were the required uh like okay. you need at least three yeah. nice so let's talk about the course structure like uh, how is the course structure and can you ex- describe explain a bit yes okay so uh, in total you would need about 45 credits to complete your masters over here and each subject that you take uh, will it, be wait, four credits uh, 
Five, four, five, forty-five, or three, yes, forty-five. Five. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, these <laughs> subjects that you take would be around four credits. So you can choose to take two subjects each semester, and uh, one a you have to take like a minimum of 9 each semester so you can okay. either take 12 or 9 so that 4 plus 4 so, plus 1 yeah yeah oh, okay so so, so one credits and four credits there are no three credits no okay okay and so, uh, what is the fee structure like um the fees depends on uh, how many subjects you are taking each semester so i think first per subject you have to pay around 3k uh, 3000 cad so okay. i for my first semester i took three subjects which came up to almost uh, 10000 for okay. the fall semester and then you also have like the health insurance and stuff that would yeah. cost you around 1800 that is compulsory and so some like minor much? i would say uh, somewhere around 10000 if you take three subjects for the semester somewhere around 6500 if you take okay. two subjects each semester yeah okay uh, so what, how are the teaching assistantships or research assistantship opportunities at the university is it easy or like really difficult competitive um i would not say it like very difficult i have had friends like uh, when they came to canada and i think they started talking to the professors they started like uh, dropping them emails like all of the professors that are teaching the btech students so some of them got their uh, tas in the first semester itself so not yeah. that difficult it's not very difficult but you have to be very proactive because there are like a lot of students over here yeah so and everyone is looking for something to do on the campus because that's relatively easier to w- what kind of job you would find outside the campus yeah, yeah. and apart from tas and rs there were like other roles that you could apply to to work yeah. for the campus so okay. even i was working as a assistant uh, events assistant or something like that when i came to canada okay. like for my first semester like okay. for a few months yeah so what was the salary that time like when you were working it was 15.25 like a dollar above the base pay so okay and you don't really have to work uh, 20 hours you could work more than that you could work less than that so that was a good thing so were you working 20 or more <laughs> I think it was more than 20 hours for a few weeks and much less than 20 hours for a few weeks so so whenever possible huh yeah yeah so uh what are the future prospects of the course and like how does the university help you in finding a full time opportunity the course uh, this course uh, applied computer science that we are taking is relatively much difficult to the other courses that there are like the software engineering and some other courses so i've heard that they are relatively easier um but it does not really uh, dip, like it does not really affect the job that you're going to take so you could easily go for software engineering and get the same job so but yes the university does help in like we have a co-op course if you apply for that you will be assigned a co-op semester and oh. then Yeah. So the they help you find a job. Yes, yes. Find a co-op, like find a find a full-time internship for the semester. And if then uh, you do well, I guess to give you a full-time position. That yeah. happens. Uh, not a placement placement per se, like what happens in India. Yes. So internship kind of thing, a chance. Yeah. So uh, did uh, did you opt something like that? Or... um after i stopped working for the university like i found a full time job because a uh, government of canada removed that 20 hours cap recently in november when i was here so i started with that and so i did not have to so what are you working right now i am working as a support engineer at some like it's a local company but then it has its offices in the new york as well so It's That's okay. Nice. That's really nice. I mean like already you got something into software. <laughs> yeah. So, uh what is the probability of finding a job once you graduate from your course? I think 
if you really uh, understand what you're doing if you are good at programming or like whatever your field of interest is it's not really that difficult because uh, maybe not in the first semester but after like after a few months i've had a lot of people who receive like job offers you could okay. say that like okay. it's not the best salary but it's somewhere that you could start that's nice so, uh, and and that when to, we have yeah. not really completed uh, the course so yeah. so Definitely. before completing the course yeah yeah so that's that's what i had as my next question like what are, what is the average salary that you can expect once you graduate and get a job that i am really uh, not sure about i have started uh, j- give me a bracket like, at least okay uh, for me something around 80k would be good for me yeah. but uh, right now the people who are getting some offers it's somewhere around like 60 70 so that is also great okay um, but like we'll yeah. see uh, when the 20 hours cap goes away like you can when you can only work for 20 hours i think that won't be the case anymore because students who are studying full time they won't be allowed to work and that's going to be a different scenario altogether yeah i think uh, now the demand is uh, less and supply is more that's the reason <laughs> if they have reduced the salaries i guess and also like uh, I had this question uh is this recession kind of situation globally affecting uh you guys in finding a job like after you graduate I I think it definitely is like I told you I had a friend who was studying here before I came to this uh, university and he graduated the semester I came here so until now I think he has not been able to find a job and a few people from his uh like who graduated with him have not been able to do the same so i think it would definitely boil down to the kind of skill sets that you personally possess there is definitely a uh, a lot of jobs available but there is a lot of competition that's uh, that's something insightful uh so one like what kind of companies like uh, let's let's do this like uh which companies like uh, that uh, come regularly to hire people from your university uh, like uh, name any one or two companies uh, that would come to concordia very frequently and hire students like for coop uh, i think uh, the process goes like uh, once you have been assigned a coop semester they will uh, train you for like 2 to 3 months it's like online training but uh you will have to go through some of the assessments and things like that they uh, because this is uh montreal and quebec in general it's like more you have to be bilingual to get some of the jobs mm-hmm. so you have to know some french that is the requirement for some of the jobs so they also tell you how to uh speak to people if you know french or when you don't know french so things like that happen first then you have a separate portal the university provides you a separate uh, login id and password and everything so you have to apply for coop from there and then you'll get internships i think uh, companies like intact and amazon um, okay. you would frequently see coop from them okay. uh, listed over there yeah and it all starts like one semester prior to the semester that you have been assigned for coop okay so uh let's talk about you now uh, so how was your first impression what was your first impression when you landed in canada and then when you went to your university like what was it like oh um it was a lot to take in uh i would certainly say that because you it's a different place altogether um because people would mostly speak in french like they know english but the general conversation around you would be in french so when i came here i think uh, i had already made my uh, plan for accommodation before i came here like i found a few people on whatsapp group from the college and then we decided to just rent a, an apartment and start living together so that part was not stressful for me but a lot of people decide to come here and then look for flats so uh they come a little early to what the deadline date is okay. so yeah that's there and i think uh like you wouldn't 
if even if you don't bring a lot of stuff from india you, you wouldn't face an issue over here because everything is available whatever is available in india you would certainly see that here as well that's nice that's really nice <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, how's the indian community how's the indian community at your university and like how diverse is the university in comparison to that number of indians uh the university and the place itself is very diverse like you would see people from everywhere but the course i would say like out of a 100 students you would find like more than 90 students are indian because this is a relatively difficult course you would find a few uh, people uh, like chinese and the people from iran in this course but in other courses i think there's a good mix of people from everywhere okay so yeah i think uh, when it comes to computers it's mostly indians or the chinese i guess yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about your living situation uh, so do you stay close to the campus or uh, far from the campus okay so i stay uh, like 500 meters away from the university building where our That's classes really are close. held uh, because there's a lot of snow over here in canada in montreal specifically like you have 3 to 4 months of know where you can't really make a commute easily so i thought it was just better to stay near the campus okay that's it so uh right now uh, how's your uh, accommodation like what type of accommodation uh, is it single or a shared room and what rent are you paying uh we are four people uh, sharing like a 2 bhk and the total rent for that flat is somewhere around 1700 so we just share that among ourselves. Okay, like four twenty-five each. Yes, all of them. That's nice, and uh, and that includes your utilities and everything. Uh, no, we have to pay for electricity separately every two months, and then we have Wi-Fi. Some of the apartments, like the bigger apartments, they provide you with Wi-Fi, but yeah, that's about all. You uh, and so, some also include the electricity, but ours doesn't. So, what do you spend on groceries every month? Um, I would say I I eat out a lot, so it's definitely then, uh, difficult to track that. Then you are the right but... person to talk about <laughs> expenses because they, everyone will know what is the maximum limit. <laughs> so, uh, I was fortunate enough to get like a job very soon uh, when I got here, so I am able to spend on shopping on eating out but usually people don't do that uh, because uh, that's not the best way to go about yes. money <laughs> yeah so uh, i would say if you uh, don't uh, if you just uh, live a normal like day to day also uh, our university provides like a uh, free lunch almost okay. uh, every working day like i think it's monday to thursday and okay. that's like all vegan so it's very nice i like it um, okay it's a long queue but it's nice food it's so, worth it <laughs> yeah so if you just uh if you are a person who would cook in uh more often so i think it would be somewhere around 100 150 um i think it would even like i think the max would be 200 nothing more than that okay and, and then uh, you have you, your uh, yeah. yeah then you have your phone bills uh, that would be definitely not less than 50 dollars every month okay. no matter which uh, provider you decide to go with um, and then you have your wi-fi that if you share i think it will be like 20 per person okay so approximately how much a month uh, this would equate around i think uh, six seven eight hundred um uh i think 700 a 700 is a like okay. good and, and and what what do you spend if i may ask <laughs> um uh i think it would <laughs> it would go to around uh 1100 or 1200 because so so i would say i would say so it should be between around 700 and 1100 dollars <laughs> based on your expenses individual expenses like eating out is expensive over here yeah, but, yeah. that's true and that's it, true it, it's good food though but i would suggest to not do that 
wait for a full time job <laughs> yes maybe but yeah so uh, can you share one good experience and one bad experience you had till now um one good experience like the people are uh, very polite and in general very friendly so you would just be walking around the street and you will find people talking to you and just share their experiences and just be it's nice to just uh you know so, talk to people over here so and a bad experience bad experience so far um i would say the course itself is uh very very challenging like if you want to get a very good gpa which is not compulsory i'd say but if you want to even like get a decent gpa you would have to spend a lot of time because unlike india you have to really work on the assignments over here and then just the projects and it's very very time consuming okay but uh, i think you are doing great i mean like you are doing your course along with your full time job <laughs> I'm a, I I have to because like I I'm also paying my uh, tuition myself uh okay. I this this admit that I got for fall like it was a deferred admission I got it a semester prior to what I uh, came for so okay. for some reason they just returned all the first year fees that you have to pay like to getting oh. like for getting the student visa so okay. like when I came here my fees was not paid so I just Did that. I have to manage. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you don't mind, may I know how much are you earning right now with your full-time job a month? Um, it's somewhere around like three, three k. Three k per month. Okay, that's yeah. nice. All right. So, uh, any suggestions or any advice to the students who are planning to pursue masters at Concordia University, or like anything that you want to talk? Uh, choose your course wisely, um, and maybe, if possible, like I know it's uh, not really possible to know people through WhatsApp groups or Facebook or whatever where you wherever you're finding your accommodation from, but maybe try and uh, see uh, what kind of people you want to live with because finding a home uh, is not really uh, very easy over here. you have to put a lot of time into that so if you don't bond well with your roommates it's going to be a difficult one year okay that's that's some good advice <laughs> <laughs> well, well yeah that's about it from me and uh, thank you so much for sharing your experience and giving such great suggestions and yeah have a good Thanks. day